What's up, everybody? This your boy, Bless the Best, coming at you again with what I'm known for at this point in time, right? Okay. We got somebody that's familiar to everybody that's been rolling in these black empowerment circles for years. Somebody that should be familiar to everybody else, but it's my first time um, featuring him on my channel, right? The main reason why is because this particular person has a very bad reputation in the black empowerment community at this point. You know, a lot of people see him as untrustworthy due to the. Um, I might as well go ahead and, and tell you who it is because I can't drag it out any further. You'll know from the clues anyway. But we're talking about the great Dr. Umar Johnson. The prince of pan Africanism, who you know, man, he's took his lumps and bumps over the years. They said that he was scamming the people about a fraudulent school, but I saw on this clip he said he was he was broadcasting from the school. I hadn't really kept up with it like that. And um, what made me stop taking Dr. Umar Johnson seriously was when he got caught. I think it was I think he was in a beef with Tariq Nasheed, and he was on the phone like he talked to some kind of hitman or killers or whatever. And he got exposed on a live stream that he wasn't even on the phone. When he was just a big front. And like right there, you know, once you go that far with the theatrics, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll hear you. But at the same time, I stopped listening. It's hard, you know, for me to take you seriously after that. But I came across I came across this clip scrolling on Twitter where you got Dr. Umar Johnson. Um, he's on a panel. I don't know what show, but he's on the panel with um two females and one dude one of the females on the panel is familiar to me and probably familiar to all y'all too and that's um miss bang cynthia g she's on the panel doing what she does her regular male fashion but the clarity in which um dr umar johnson spoke with on this piece it may mean you know he trying he trying to um redeem himself you know what i mean maybe 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 we don't need maybe we don't need to just throw the brother away so fast and i noticed you know Tariq nasheed he he has this he has this little spats with umar johnson but i really don't feel like he got nothing really personal against him you know it's, it's just a professional thing so i'm gonna run the clip and um i'll be jumping in time to time to stress little points okay right here at the beginning when it come on the question is does is is it a war against black men? That's what we're gonna start off at. So we're gonna let them take it away. Absolutely, yes. Hope is there? No. Duan? Absolutely, yes. Cynthia G, where are you on this? The only war is the war that black men are raging against the black community. So is that a yes or no? Yes, there it is. So, Cynthia G, y'all, y'all hear how she coming? But we'll let her rock out. There's a couple things. Number one, we have to make sure that we conduct a systems analysis and an institutional assessment. Communities are made up of institutions or the lack thereof. Communities are governed by systems or the lack thereof. Let us be very clear about something. This fratricide, this black on black crime that so many of our brothers are engaging in. Let us remember, Irish did the same thing. No lies detected so far. Italians did the same thing. European Jews did the same thing. And in the 1930s and 1940s, the United States government decided to upgrade them to white status and in so doing, gave the Italians control of the fire departments in the black community, gave the Irish control of the police departments in the black community and gave- Proper socioeconomic status wipes out poverty and crime all facts another point for dr umar in the european jewish immigrants control of the civil service municipal jobs that they still control in many city centers today the point that i'm making tammy is that america gave southern european immigrants an economic stimulus package before they gave that economic stimulus package to jews to irish and italians they were doing the exact same thing black men are doing today selling drugs 
breaking the law, running in gangs, killing one another. But the government intervened and aided them. The reason black male pathology is still going on 30, 40, 50 years later is there has been no resolution. There have been no solutions and there have been no governmental intervention. With that being said, I'm not waiting on the government to solve the problems of black men. We have OK, so so he made a very, very good argument about that. You can't single out black men for turning to crime when the socioeconomics of their community wasn't intact because everybody did the same thing. The only difference was the government did carve outs and set asides for the other races like Irish and Italian and got, got them through to the point where they could do legit, legitimate business and help each other. And the crime, the crime was needed there. And he gonna go on further to not to anticipate the argument that would come from the other side, like 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 the victim argument, or saying that that black people need somebody to come in, swoop in, and save them because they're victims. With what he's about to say next, take it away, Dr. Umar. Is black men have to unite, come together, organize, and solve our own problems. Just because we can admit that the government introduced pathology into the black community, we can still take full responsibility for ending it ourselves. Hope I see you nodding. Yes, because I mic drop. I feel like when you can name all of these things so eloquently and so beautifully, and yet y'all still fail at being able to do these things after years and years and years and years and years of trying, where do we find a new solution? Or that is that we're fighting for black men is the one that black men are fighting within themselves. Is it about Hope Giselle, Arthur, activist and man voice champion of the world adjacency to whiteness is it about being able to assimilate to that white hand or is it really about the freedom of black men in the black family in the black community they want to assimilate to whatever whiteness whatever white male privilege they, <clears throat> they can get. and that's a large part of the problem dr the umar you welcomed us straw man argument to the show by saying black power black power okay um is is there some truth to open mockery the assimilation that black men want or perceive to want when it comes to this war being waged against well, you? Well, there's definitely some truth to it, but I think that truth is also evident in black women. Uh, black men, many of them may choose to want a white woman, but many black women choose to look like white women. So we have to look at ourselves and we and we have to look at who really wants the gender war. Black men? I think not. Take it away, Dr. Umar. You have to recognize that the pathology is not more of one gender than the other. That's the issue I have with conversations that seek to see who is more at fault, the black man or the black woman. It's not about who's more at fault. We rise together or we will perish together. The and it's also a bad faith argument on behalf of black feminists like these two females on this panel. Black man cannot survive without his woman and the black woman cannot survive without her man. And the issue that I take with my two sisters narrative is I hear a lot of criticism. I hear a lot of condemnation, but I don't hear any empowerment. I don't hear any solutions coming from either one of them. It appears as if that there is a hatred towards black men about those sisters, even when they say. Bingo. Dr. Umar is merely stating the obvious. Said, why are we going back to 1960? Let's stay in 2022. That is so immature and irresponsible of a statement. As a psychologist, when a client comes into my office, the first thing I perform is a history on their depression, a history on their suicide, a history on their anxiety. When you go see the medical doctor, he performs a history. When you go buy a home, they perform a history. When you go purchase an automobile, they perform a And what he's saying right now, in my interpretation, is how I always look at everything, right? Before before I start criticizing another black person, I look at the history and the circumstances and who is the author of the circumstances. All black pathologists always lead back to the white supremacists. A history on that automobile. But when we talk about the problems that affect black males, we're supposed to look at it in a vacuum. We're not supposed to put it in a historical context. Right. And with that being said, the, the language and the narrative that's coming out of the mouth of these two black women is one that I think the white power structure would endorse because it totally absolves them of any responsibility for the hell black men catch in this country. Cynthia G, you did say. You better stop playing with Umar. Let's go, Bayang. Why are we going all the way back to 1960? There is some truth to history when it comes to evaluating anything or anyone. 
So what do you say to that? I say we should go to the historical context because what I have not heard from Dr. Umar Johnson, or I think his name is um, Dwayne, Dwayne, Duan is what I have not heard as they're mentioning all of the things that was done to them. I haven't heard what you did in response to it. So I would like to know. I would have hit her with a bang yang joke right there if I was um, Umar. She opened the door. What did you do in response in the his, in history other than go to the Supreme Court and petition to have access to the men's women that you're complaining and, and accusing of disenfranchising you? See, because in the 1960s, what black men were really doing, and, the, and it's been documented, many civil rights leaders have admitted to it, what black men were doing is chasing the white man's woman. Still in TBA talking points. The TBA that she hates the most trying to so-called stick it to him by way of going to their women, which you should have been doing is trying to get liberation for yourself. What you should have been trying to do is get that foot off your neck, but see the foot is not on your neck. And the only time you recognize it being on your neck is when you want to get away with doing something that you think white men are getting away with doing, because let's just be real. Whenever we hear about this war against black men, it's usually being brought up when there's a black man like R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, we see Trey songs going through it, Aerie Spears, when they engage in some degeneracy and then they're getting a consequence for it. And black men think that because they perceive white men to be getting away. Straw man, democratic shield, me too, feminist ass white woman argument. With crimes, they want to be able to get away with crimes as well. The reality is Umar, Dr. Umar can sit up here and list all the different ways that the system is disenfranchising black men and lump black men in a victim boat. But the reality is he can, what he cannot tell you is what black men did in response to it because they did nothing. They laid down and they nested under the skirt of their non-black preferences and only to complain that whenever they commit a crime, they're not getting off like they did. So let's admit. find out. Dr. Umar, what have black men done? Cynthia just threw Dr. Umar um, behind the back alley from half court. And he is about to catch the ball and 360 dump that bitch right on her bang. Well, number one, again, I think that it is such a shame coming from a psychological perspective that we seek to heal our wounds as a people by relying on unprofessional testimony by individuals who have a vendetta against the opposite gender in their community. When you hear Sister Cynthia speak, you can hear a hurt and a pain and a hatred towards black men. We cannot find an effective solution to black male female relationship issues or the oppression of black men or black women. Umar just went 360 through the legs dunk on the bayang. When the people at the table having the conversation have uh, emotional, negative, emotional, and pathological interest in the conversation mm -hmm. that are not- Umar, the question was- Negative, emotional, and pathological interest in the conversation caused her to lose it. She couldn't hold it. The bang gang stood up. About my emotional state. The question now, was, what did black men was do was in talking. response to I their disenfranchisement? Yeah, because talking. because you're trying to pathologize my emotional state, not that I'm a psychologist too, but what May you're I not finish? doing is telling us what black men did. I, I believe he'll get there, Dr. May Omar. Dr. Omar? And I'll end it quickly, sister. Nice work, um, moderator. Tammy, according to Mrs. Cynthia G., Dr. King was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Malcolm X was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Mega Evers was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Fred Hampton was assassinated because he was doing nothing. That narrative that black men have done nothing to fight back against systemic oppression, not only against ourselves, but against our women, our children, our elders, and our community is absolutely ridiculous. The cemetery is filled with black men, names we know and names we don't know, who gave their life for the freedom, liberation, and Chill out, Umar. You're going to break the backboard, man. Emancipation of African people. How can you disrespect the history of so many black men past and present who continue to fight? I'm sitting in a school right now that mm -hmm. we built with all black money. Four buildings. Where you sitting at, Umar? Where you sitting at? Who gave their life for the freedom, liberation, and emancipation of African Brain people. How back. can you disrespect the history of so many black men past and present who continue to fight? I'm sitting in a school right now okay. that we built with all black money, four buildings that we're going to educate black men in. It's Umar did build a school. It's not easy to solve our problems because there's always 
black people in your very same community who's fighting against what you're trying to do to help it. But in addition to that, the white power structure is, is always waving its wand of oppression to try to sabotage anything we do. I think that the analysis of our women is too overly simplistic. Mm. And in being such, it is dishonest. Mm.